<laughs> we'll call this meeting to order at 6.30. And please join me in a pledge of allegiance. Wait a minute. It's over here. I apologize. I pulled a switch on us. It was moved for a different meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I apologize for that. I have, the, fa I have the flag in the wrong place. That is a major etiquette faux pas. My apologies. Roll call. Oh, roll call. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Wood. Here. Commissioner Melcher. Here. Commissioner Wolfius. Here. Commissioner Journey. Present. Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Branson. Yes. Commissioner um, uh, Chair Parker is absent tonight. Absent and excused. And, ex and excused, yes. He's ill. It always sounds better to say excused. True. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this is an opportunity for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on topics that are not listed on the agenda. Can you hear back there all right? <clears throat> okay, so we'd invite any of you that would like to address the Planning Commission to do so at this time. Any issues not on the agenda? Okay. <clears throat> it's, it's if it's regarding the letter you received in the mail, that's later in on the agenda, so not at this time. Okay. Uh, next topic will be meeting minutes from April 6th. Are there any adjustments or corrections to those minutes? So just to um, follow up on what Commissioner Walthius was saying, my absence last meeting was excused. Okay. Was that not noted in the minutes? It's not noted in the minutes. Okay, we will modify. Whoever makes the motion, please uh, specify that change and we'll. Should be kind it. of standardized. <laughs> that way we won't sound like we're derelict. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, if there's no changes to the minutes from April 6th. Uh, I think we want one change. Is that you want oh, that noted change. in the minutes? Just the one change? So I would move to approve the Planning Commission meeting minutes of April 6, 2023, with the one modification that Eva Journey's absence was excused. I'll second. And a second. We have a motion and a, and a second with one modification to approve the minutes. All in favor, say aye. 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 And I abstain because I wasn't here. Pardon? I abstain because I wasn't here. Okay. For the record, that's uh, five eyes and one abstention and one absent. Okay. <clears throat> I would like to share this statement. <clears throat> Persons interested in commenting on these issues should submit testimony in writing to the Community and Economic Development Department located at City Hall prior to the hearing or to attend the meeting and give testimony verbally. Persons who wish to testify will be given the opportunity to do so by the chair of the commission at the planning commission meeting. Such testimony should address the zoning ordinance criteria which are applicable to the request. The Sweet Home Planning Commission welcomes your interest in these agenda items. Pursuant to ORS 192.640, this agenda includes a list of principal subjects anticipated to be considered at the meeting. However, the Commission may consider additional subjects as well. This meeting is open to the public and interested citizens are invited to attend. The failure of an issue to be raised in a hearing in person or by letter or failure to provide sufficient specificity to afford the decision makers an opportunity to respond to the issue precludes appeal to the land use board of appeals based on that issue. Everybody heard that? <clears throat> 
A copy of the application, all documents and evidence relied upon by the applicant and applicable criteria are available for inspection at no cost and a copy will be provided at reasonable cost. A copy of the staff report will be available for inspection at no cost at least seven days prior to the hearing and a copy will be provided at reasonable cost. Please contact the Community and Economic Development Department at 3225 Main Street, Sweet Home, Oregon. Tonight we'll have two related uh, subjects that we will discuss. I would like to review the procedure for that. We'll open each hearing individually. Then <clears throat> with Blair's help, can you hear me all right? With Blair's help, we'll review what that hearing is and the hearing disclosure statement. The applicable substantive criteria are list, listed in the staff report. Testimony, arguments, and evidence must be directed toward the criteria described <clears throat> or other criteria in the plan or land use regulation which a person believes apply to the decision. Failure to, to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision maker and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue precludes appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on that issue. On each of them, I will ask the Planning Commission if we have any personal bias or conflict of interest or ex parte information. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Larson will give us a staff report. Then we will invite testimony, the applicant's testimony, which tonight happens to be the city and the school district. We will invite proponents testimony, those who are wishing to speak in favor of the application. Then we will invite those who wish to speak in opposition or followed by anybody with neutral testimony. And then we will go back through that same cycle again, giving each an opportunity for rebuttal. When that is over, we'll close the public hearing. We will have a discussion and a decision among the Planning Commission and a motion to approve, deny, approve with conditions or continue. If there is an objection to the decision, it can be appealed to the City Council. The Planning Commission shall set the number of days for the appeal period at the time the City Council goes through the public hearing process all over again. Recommendation made by the Planning Commission and the City Council makes the final decision. If you have a question, please wait until appropriate time and then direct your questions to the Planning Commission. Please speak one at a time so the recorder knows who is speaking. And it is our, our custom that if you're going to speak and address the Planning Commission, that you would come forward to this chair right here, state your name and address, and then uh, relay whatever you'd like to relay to us. So with that, I think we'll move ahead with the, the uh, applications. We will first address application CMA 23-01. This is a request by the City of Sweet Home. Excuse me, thank you. We'll open this hearing at 6.43 p.m. To repeat again, this is application CMA 23-01. The City of Sweet Home, the Sweet Home School District, the Sweet Home Fire District are proposing to change the comprehensive plan map for their properties 
consisting of approximately 280 acres, located in Sweet Home, Oregon 97386. The Sweet Home Comprehensive Plan Map is proposed to change from the commercial central C1 zone, the commercial highway C2 zone, the residential low density R1 zone, the residential medium density R2 zone, the residential high density R2 zone and the mixed use employment <coughs> MUE zone to the public facility PF zone. That's a big mouthful, but it's really simpler than it sounds. The subject properties listed in the application do not have a public facility comprehensive plan designation. The comprehensive plan map amendment must be approved to complete a zone map amendment. On October 27th, 2022, the City of Sweet Home adopted the revised Sweet Home Municipal Code, Title 17, that included 17.24 pub <coughs> public facility zone. <coughs> Planning Commission will hold a public hearing and make a recommendation <laughs> excuse me, to the City Council. Molly, do you have a bottle of water? <coughs> Somebody really on the call. <laughs> So application CMA 23-01 is being filed simultaneously with application ZMA 23-02. The subject properties that do not have a comprehensive plan designation, <coughs> a public facility zone. The Planning Commission will hold a public hearing and make a recommendation to the City Council. The City Council will hold a public hearing and decide on this application. Uh, they're being filed simultaneously, which I've already mentioned. The subject properties that do not have a comprehensive plan designation of public facility, PF, <coughs> will be pending the approval of the application of CMA 23 1. To complete the zone map amendment proposed in application CMA 23-2. The applicant is the city of Sweet Home. The property owner is the city of Sweet Home. Commissioner, this is the staff report, so I can go oh. over. I, this, that's the staff report that you're going on to, so I can take care of that part. Okay. Time with my staff and property location. Okay, let's go ahead with the staff report. Oh, we just did that. I have to ask each commissioner. You want to do it again for each one? Uh, well, yes. Oh, excuse me. We did. We didn't need to do that. So I'll ask the planning commission if you have any export any bias. Mm -hmm. I do want to state for the record that I do live within the noticeable. Okay. I do not. Any bias? No. No. Is there any conflict of interest in any ex parte information? No. no. Okay, we'll turn the time over to Blair Larson for the. Thank you. Um, so, Commissioners, as you're aware, last fall we um, updated our code, which includes a public facility zone. We previously did not have such a zone. Um, the purpose of the public facility zone is to govern public facilities, schools, uh, fire stations, um, treatment plants, things that the, that the government agencies in the city run. Um, and it has rule has all the rules specified in that zone for how those things will be developed. 
Um, right now, all of the properties that are owned by the school district, the fire district and the city are all spread throughout the city and all have different zones, making sometimes uh, making improvements to those properties um, difficult because in our um, in all of our other zones, anything that is a change to a public facility requires a conditional use and um, therefore would need to come before the Planning Commission and possibly the City Council, depending on what it is. That makes the process of, of making changes to properties, even when they're very small, uh, much longer than uh, is really necessary. And so this, this move is intended to streamline our operations and make things <coughs> easier. For example, um, <coughs> Uh, Northside Park is made up of six separate parcels and to put those all together into one parcel is necessary in order to build anything because you don't want something across a property line, etc. Um, but that ha then has to go to the City Council first for them as the property owner to sign the application and then it requires a conditional use because it's a, ch it's a change to the, um, the public use of that property. If that's all changed to the public facility zone, it makes it much easier to handle that, and most of it can be done administratively. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that because these are publicly owned properties, there still is a public process for the development. It's just usually handled at the city council level with planning out what we're going to fund and what we're going to build. Um, and so these are the properties affected are various lots throughout the city, um, and so uh, all in different zones. Uh, the map in your packet and that was sent out with the um, with the notices uh, details shows all those properties. Uh, in effect, it's and anything that's owned by any of these agencies. Um, and uh, since we have a fair uh, number of folks joining us tonight, I'll just mention that uh, state law requires us to send out a notice by mail to any property owner within 300 feet of a of, of one of the affected properties. And so. There were 1,600 letters that had to go out because there's a lot of people that live within proximity of every single public property uh, in the city, given that we have a number of schools and, and other facilities. Uh, and so that's why you uh, all received uh, the notification. The properties consisting of approximately 280 acres uh, are in Sweet Home, Oregon, 97386. Sweet Home Comprehensive Plan map is proposed to change for each of those properties from the various zones that they are in to the pub new public facility zone. Um, I will add also that seems like a very large amount of acreage and it is. Um, the bulk of that uh, approximately 220 or so is the city's quarry property, which is completely undeveloped at this time. And so it, that tends to inflate the, the size of this project and make it seem bigger than uh, than it is but that's that's all one property on that um, just for that one place um, all right the application um, this application was reviewed in accordance with our um, sweet home municipal code um, it was received the application was received and deemed complete on March 17th 2023 notices were sent uh, according to our code, they were emailed and mailed via U.S. Postal Service on March 21st, 2023. Notice was posted in the New Era newspaper on March 29th, 2023. Um, the Sweet Home Comprehensive Plan map, um, I already detailed how it's proposed to change. The application complies with, uh, with state plan, statewide planning goals, um, including planning goals two and land use planning and public um, Planning goal two, which is land use planning and planning goal 11, which is public facilities and services. Table one of the comprehensive plan land use designations lists public uh, as a land use designation. However, there was never a municipal code written for public land use. Um, chapter uh, Sweet Home Municipal Code, chapter 17.25, public facility zone criteria were implemented on October 27th, 2023. The update to the public facility zone will bring the subject properties into compliance with the comprehensive plan designation. The use of each of these of the subject properties has been historically public. public. A comprehensive plan map amendment is required in order to do a zone map amendment for the properties listed on attachments A and B. The zone change will bring the zoning designation in conformance with the use of the, pro of the subject properties. The use of the subject properties is not changing. 
Um, it's this comprehensive plan map is required to do the zone map amendment for any future development of the properties, which would also be uh, a public use. So uh, conclusion and recommendation based on the findings uh, listed of this in this report, staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend that the City Council approve this application. Since the request is for a comprehensive plan amendment, staff has not re recommended any conditions of approval. In acting on a uh, Planning Commission action, in acting on a zone change application, the Planning Commission will hold a public hearing at which it may either recommend that the City Council approve or deny the applications. The recommendation should be based on the applicable review and decision criteria. The City Council uh, will hold a public hearing, hearing and decide on this application. Um, motion, after opening the public hearing and receiving testimony, the Planning Commission's options in include the following. One, move to recommend that the City of Council approve application CMA 23-01, which includes adopting the findings of fact listed in the staff report. Two, move to recommend that the City Council deny application CMA 23-01, um, in, in which case reasons should be specified. Three, move to continue the public hearing to a date and time certain, which must be specified or not. <coughs> And that is the staff report on this item. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Larson. Uh, <clears throat> that basically covers the applicant's testimony. We would like now to invite anybody that would like to speak in favor of the application to come forward and speak. Okay. Uh, for the record, that's none. Mm -hmm. We would like now to invite any of those that would be in opposition to the application to come forward and speak. And as I said before, come to this chair, state your name and address, and then address the Planning Commission as you would like. Anybody wanting to speak in opposition? Please come forward to this chair. Have a seat and be comfortable. <laughs> be able to ask questions for more clarity. You're welcome to ask those. Um, I was wondering, as far as when the zoning's changed, is this going to affect any of the Property owners or residents in Sweet Home are going to raise their taxes. If you could state your name and address okay. for the record. Renee Hoover, 863 18th Avenue. Okay. Um, this doesn't have any impact on taxes. Um, the zoning won't change. The that. zoning will not change anyone's taxes. It, the zoning doesn't, um, doesn't approve anything to be built. It doesn't approve any money to be spent. It just changes the, the designation of each of the properties. But being a public facility, won't that make it where it's basically kind of stating that everyone would have accessibility to it or would provide, you know, mm. for everyone? So that that's usually where the city and sure. their taxes come into it. Sure. But so a public facility covers, um, it covers publicly accessible places like parks and city hall, but it also covers places like the water treatment plant or the wastewater treatment plant where the public is not invited simply because those are industrial sites that are not intended for that kind of use. Uh, and so all of these areas that are identified on the map are already either have existing public facilities already on them, or they are simply owned by these entities for future possible development of a public facility. And so this doesn't change anything that's physically on those properties. Um, yeah. It just makes any future development of those properties um, easier and more streamlined. Those the, those developments, if any new developments happen, for example, suppose there's some school district owned property and at some point the school decides or the school district decides to build a school on that property, that would be entirely up to the school district based on their current funding and their their current ability to collect taxes and whatever bonds that they pass. That would all be a separate process and would not in, doesn't involve this at all. Um, this would potentially make it easier for them in that and maybe make the development of facilities cheaper slightly, 
um, but it wouldn't really change anybody's taxes one way or the other. But with those facilities, once they go up, they, they would produce more taxes that, that I, property owners would have to pay on. Uh, not necessarily. It depends. Uh, some uh, we we are a growing community, and so if you have a um, a growing need for, say, a um, another school, for example, ideally you'd have more property owners um, that have because the city has grown and and that growth is required. You're having an increase of properties that are paying into it, um, but. It, it also depends on whether they're replacing a building that was previously used and was in disrepair and more expensive to maintain. Uh, you know, for example, if you're replacing one building with another and the previous building um, was extremely expensive to heat, uh, you know, you might have some efficiencies, but from the new structure and, and you're not necessarily keeping both of them, the new one is replacing the old one. And so operationally, you're looking at around the same cost. Now, obviously, well, there's the capital cost. Their cost their change or right. So this is this is going to vary depending on what the development is, because nothing that's being decided tonight is going to guarantee that anything is going to be built. It's just the. Is there any guarantee that they're not? If the zoning gets through, are is the city or the school district going to sell any of that, those lots to a private party to where they would have able to build what they would? If well, uh, this this change would probably make it more difficult for the fire district to the school district or the city to sell the property um, because the sale of the property would not change the zoning designation. You know, for example, if we had a, a some city property that was zoned public facility um, and we decided to sell it, uh, the new property owner would be burdened with a public facility zoned pre piece of property that they wouldn't be able to build a single family home on. Right. They um, could do a profitable business. Like no, they wouldn't. That's, that's what I'm saying. Is that if it's zoned public facility, you wouldn't be able to do anything so but build a public facility on. They, could, they would have to. Yeah, they'd have to build a water treatment plant on it or something, or or a school. And there's not really much money in that for a private um, private business. So, yeah. Well, that's the biggest concern because we don't tax already the city taxes in such a high, and if it continues to have more, we're going to have to pay more on these lots. Of, of, Property owners, it's going to end up making a lot of yeah. the people that just get by end up losing their homes, and it's going to be a place where only the rich are going to be able to live. Certainly, taxes are a concern, but this this move tonight has no effect on them at all. But it couldn't. Uh, no, I, I, it, it's really a completely different situation. You're, it's like the difference between. Um, I mean, if you own a property that. Uh, I'm not even sure trying to think of a of a private analogy for this, but it you could you could apply for a zone change for your property, right? Um, you probably live in a single family home, I'm guessing, and it's probably zone residential low density. You could apply for a zone change and um, and have that property be zoned for multifamily development. And theoretically, that would mean that you could put up an apartment building and um, and lease all those things out. And that would certainly change your taxes if you chose to do that. Right. But the zoning change wouldn't be the thing that changes the taxes. Right. It's the, the construction, it's the construction what? that you can then do. Because it will give you more, it easy, right. easy, more ability to not have to go, like I said, and put in applications to have certain things done. Right, but, exactly. But even when, suppose, suppose a school district decided to build a new school. Even if they had to go through a long process and have that approved by the planning commission, even during that deliberation, taxes aren't going to be discussed at all because it's a land use decision, not a tax decision. It's 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 assumed that if taxes or the cost of the facility is going to be discussed, it's going to be in front of the school board when they're putting their budget together and making that determination of what to do with their property. Uh, I think it would be important to point out here that <clears throat> the the applications we're considering tonight are basically a housekeeping matter. There's no yeah. end to what the might have beens or the might be's <laughs> when you think about all the ramifications that could happen in the future. But as Blair has said, our taxes will go up if we vote and approve on a bond issue to build a new school. 
So right. that really isn't applicable to what we're talking about tonight. This is primarily just a housekeeping. We, we've recently worked on our comprehensive plan and it's a matter of bringing the zoning ordinances in compliance with our comprehensive plan. And I don't mm -hmm. understand what you mean. Yeah. This, okay. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of that and that's not blocked me there. Okay. Yeah, but I understand that part. Um, so it won't have anything to do with any of the property lines that it wants to do. Uh, no, the, I mean, the property lines are what they are. Um, well, they, the only way that, I mean, property lines can change, but not as part of this application. And the city can't, or all of these organizations can't enlarge in, in these properties because they're, they're surrounded by private property. They'd have to basically buy land to add two of them. Even if they did, They'd have to go through this same process to change the zoning if they want to change the zoning to public facility. Because if you have, you know, for example, if city, city hall right here is changed to um, public facility, and then the city decides to buy, buy the property next door, which is zoned for commercial use, um, even if the city owned it and wanted to combine these two properties, the zoning of that other portion would remain oh, right. commercial okay. unless they went through the process of changing it. I just mean as far as the residentials that led up to the ones that you're changing them. Oh, no, it can't, it can't change those. That would be a taking. Blair, is it, um, just to clarify a little, it's Renee, correct? Yeah. Thank you for coming, by the way. Uh, just to clarify a little about um, the lot lines and changing, uh, basically what's happening is we're taking all of these public properties they're right now in commercial zones, in residential right. zones, where if they wanted to sell their property, they could sell it and they could, if they sold it in a commercial zone, they could throw something up like they're worried about. What we're doing right now is turning all of those properties right. that are owned into public that, yeah. facility, yeah, public which is not something that we actually could designate them as before. Right. Last year, we made a change that made it possible. I just want to make sure of the ripple effect. Oh, yeah. You can have the change happen mm -hmm. and it'll not be brought up now, yeah. But mm -hmm. then you'll find out later, they'll, mm -hmm. well, they really legally now have the right to do that or take this or mm -hmm. because it was changed. to. Uh, and this is more yeah. of a protection to say you can't do commercial things on your public facility land. You have to use it as a public facility right. now. Right. Yeah. Well, and it makes it a lot easier. Like I said, I can understand that whole process. Mm -hmm. for, for all that, for yeah. life, so. Thank you. But that's, I just I think that's all I really had. I just wanted to kind of ask about that. And, and I was mainly concerned about the taxes. But that mm -hmm. was an aspect. Okay. Tomorrow, I hope, and, I hope you got your answer. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? The applications. Is there anyone that would like to speak neither for or against? The application. Neutral testimony. And I don't think we have any for any rebuttals. Mm -hmm. So we'll close the we'll close this public hearing at 703 and discuss it among the planning commission. If I may, um, Commissioner. I um, just wanted to let you all know if anyone else has any additional questions that you don't want to ask in front of the planning commission, but just would like an answer on it, I'm happy to stay after the meeting to talk with anyone who would like to. <clears throat> okay, planning commission. Well, I think you guys address their issues, and it is like Laura said, it is kind of a housekeeping, and it we did put this opportunity in place be, to address a specific issue of our public facilities not being zoned correctly, and this does that. So I'm in favor of it. <clears throat> Thank you. We've been dealing with the compre with um, the comprehensive plan as our view to the future, and this move moves us toward how we want to have sweet home organized properties in the future. So it's consistent. Yeah, in partnership with the school district and the yeah. fire district. So I really like the collaboration between the entities. Yeah. Nancy? Well, it looks like it would be um, kind of tying everything together neatly and 
making it a lot easier to take care of the property without having to deal with all the issues of what zone is it, without having to deal with trying to change a, uh, a zone to be able to do something to the fire department or to a school. So it sounds to me like a good idea. So I'm for it. Um, uh, it's probably something that should have happened a long time ago. So yeah, I'm for it. Well, as we have redone the comprehensive plan, we have had a lot of these little issues to bring the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinances together. And right. yes, uh, it could have been done a long time ago, but we're still in the process. Sure, sure. Laura, did you speak? Um, well, I spoke a little bit, but I am I am in favor of this. It's going to clean everything up, make it a lot easier, more. Um, we're going to be a lot more effective as a government in taking care of our public facilities, and I think that will be a real benefit to the community and the people who live here. It sounds like we have a consensus of <clears throat> our thinking and our thoughts, so I would entertain a motion. I'll uh, make a motion uh, to move to recommend that the City Council approve application CMA 23-01, which includes adopting the findings of fact listed in the staff report. Second. I second. Eva seconds. All in favor? Aye. You want a roll call? Uh, you're all in the same room, so there's no need for it. All in favor, say aye. 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 <clears throat> aye. So, do you want to ask for a post? Do you want to ask for a post? Uh, I could count the heads and fingers, but <laughs> anybody opposed? <laughs> there are no. Okay, opposed. so that's six eyes and one and one <clears throat> absence. Okay, with that, let's go on to the second application. Uh, this is application. We'll open that at seven o six. And this is application ZMA 23-02. Uh, <clears throat> the request is for the City of Sweet Home, the Sweet Home School District, the Sweet Home Fire District are proposing to the change the zoning map to, of their properties consisting of approximately 425 acres located in Sweet Home, Oregon, 97386. The Sweet Home zoning map is proposed to change from the commercial central C1 zone, the commercial highway C2 zone, the recreation commercial RC zone, the residential low density R1 zone, the residential medium density R2 zone, the rent residential high density R2 zone, mixed use employment MUE zone, to the public facility PF zone. On October 27, 2022, the City of Sweet Home adopted the revised Sweet Home Municipal Code, Title 17, that included Chapter 17.24, Public Facility Zone. The Planning Commission will hold a public hearing and make a recommendation to the City Council. The City Council will hold a public hearing and decide on this application. Uh, <clears throat> as we mentioned before, this application is being filed simultaneously with CMA 23-01, and the properties that do not have a comprehensive plan designation of public facility PF will be pending the approval of application CMA 23-01. To complete the zone map amendment proposed in application ZMA 23-02. That's a lot to talk about, but we'll turn it over to Blair for staff report. We'll ask for bias. And okay. Any bias? No. 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 Any uh, ex parte information? No. 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 Uh, conflict of interest. Any conflict of interest? No. 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 That's all unanimous. Okay. Um, no doubt some of you noticed that the amount of acreage is has increased for this one. And the reason why is because our previous comprehensive plan did have some properties that were zoned that, that were had a comprehensive plan designation 
of public and but there were many that that did not and so that one only had to change the comprehensive plan designation of some of those but now we're talking about changing the zoning uh, which is different than the comprehensive plan designation we're changing the zoning of all of those properties um, in in this particular application which is why the amount of acreage is different all right um, as has been mentioned, these properties are throughout the city um, and have a number of different zones currently, and they're all being proposed to be changed to the public facility zone. Um, this uh, application has been uh, reviewed in accordance with the Sweet Home Municipal Code. The application was received and deemed complete on March 17th, 2023. Notices were sent uh, per the Municipal Code. Notices were emailed and mailed via U.S. Postal Service on March 21st, 2023. Notice was posted in the New Era newspaper on March 29th, 2023. Um, the historic use of the subject properties has been a public use. With the adoption of the public facility zone, the applicants are proposing to bring the zoning in conformance with the historic and continued use of, e of each property. The Largely everything else has been said already. Um, conclusion and recommendation. Based on the findings listed in this report, staff re recommends that the Planning Commission recommend that the City Council approve this application. Since the request is for a, is for a zone map amendment, uh, staff, staff has not recommended any conditions of approval. In acting on a Planning Commission act, action, in acting on a zone change application, the Planning Commission will hold a public hearing at which it might, may either recommend that the City Council approve or deny the applications. The recommendation should be based on the applicable review and decision criteria. The City Council will hold a public hearing and decide on this application. M motion. After the opening the public hearing and receiving testimony, the Planning Commission's options include the following. One, move to recommend that the City Council approve application ZMA 23-02, which includes adopting the findings of fact lifted in this, listed in the staff report. Two, move to recommend that the City Council deny application ZMA 23-02 uh, for specified reasons. Three, move to continue the public hearing to a date and time certain uh, and specify or other. That's it. Since these two are tied together, do we need to go through the testimony? For, um, for just the for sake of, of the process, we should. <coughs> <coughs> OK, so with that said, we would have invite anybody that would like to speak in favor of the application to come forward. Okay, we'd like then to invite anybody that would like to speak in opposition to the application to come forward. We would then like to invite anybody that would like to comment either for or against the application. And all of those have been none. Okay, we'll close that public hearing at 7.13 and discuss it among the Planning Commission. Same yeah. comments. Yeah. 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 That makes sense to have the comprehensive map match our zoning changes and I'll be in alignment with one another. Amy? You know. I'm afraid we'll have a few dittos. Yeah. <laughs> Ditto. Nancy, Todd. Yes. That's pretty unanimous, uh, but go ahead and take the vote on it if you like. You need a, you need a motion. motion for uh, I'll, take, I'll make the other motion. Excuse I'll me. make a motion. I move to recommend that the City Council approve application ZMA 23-02, which includes adopting the findings of fact listed in the staff report. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Go ahead and take a roll call vote. Oh, do you want a roll call vote on it? Yeah, just to be safe. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Wood? Yes. Commissioner Melcher? Yes. Commissioner Wolthius? Yes. Commissioner Journey? Yes. Uh, Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Branson? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Parker is absent. So six ayes and one, absten uh, one absence. All right. So the measure passes. Motion passes, yes. Okay. Uh, 
That concludes the applications for tonight. We may have some other discussion among the planning commission. Thank, thank each of you for coming and having an interest in the future of this city and uh, its development. So, we'll close it at 7.15. On to the staff updates. Um, we'll stay. Angela is absent today because she was doing a training in Bend um, as part of the um, building program. So uh, even though she's not our building permit technician, um, she does supervise our building per permit technician. And so um, and she fills in enough that it's really best to have her cross train there. So um, she texted me and said it's been really good. Um, so glad okay. that she is able to get away and uh, get some training. Um, and so I uh, forgive me, I don't know all exactly that she's dealt with when it comes to some of the applications that have come in. Um, but we have had uh, a couple of pre-application meetings recently that are of interest. Um, we had one with, um, as you may recall, we approved a subdivision a couple years ago for the end of Foothills Drive. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a new owner of that property. And the uh, the new owner wanted to, it's a developer that we've met with before. And, um, and so he met with us to talk about um, both what's been approved and what changes might be uh, possible and so forth. Uh, since that that subdivision was approved, the code changed and the minimum lot size changed um, from 8,000 down to 7,000. And so he is likely to submit a modification of that of that subdivision um, to, and which would basically mean he's going to submit a whole new subdivision application. Um, but at the same time, he's, he, he's, he's decided he's going to uh, renew the current one or extend the current one um, and then at the same time apply for a revised version. And that way, if something happens and the revised version is denied, he still has a subdivision that he could build, which well, I like is that either smart. way he plans to develop. Um, right, and in, I, I live right down the street from there. I'd love to have a, another more sidewalk to um, have my kids walk along. So um, <laughs> the other one is uh, another uh, developer that we've worked with before in a previous subdivision, but it's over for the Southeast uh, part of town and um and it would be it, fairly large they're proposing an initial um 50 lots or so with an additional twice that many uh, after so it would be one of those developments that would take a very long time to build out but they are planning it all out and um so this was just a pre-application meeting to discuss kind of initial stuff but um it uh it was nice to see the layout that they proposed it was fairly logical and um and looks really good on paper so hopefully we'll have that before you in the next month or two um for you to take a look at but we'll see what they're this this is it's up to them to finish all the engineering and and other arrangements so um sometimes it's several months after a pre pre-application meeting before we actually see the official application but it's nice to see that there are still folks proposing things uh even given the state of the housing market uh, right now and, and specifically the state of interest rates. But um, there are certainly people who are preparing for when things get better and the rates come back down. Um, other than that, um, oh, the council um, passed the or adopted the housing needs analysis at the last council meeting. And, um, and that ordinance requires two more readings before it's uh, completed, but that's well on its way um, to doing that. And then um, at our next, I think the following council meeting, not this coming one, but the one on the 23rd will be when there's the final public hearing on the street vacation for Redwood Street. Mm -hmm. And um, that'll be good to have that finally over with. And that's basically it. Is there a second meeting for us this month, two weeks from now? Yes, I believe so. That actually, that meeting is when we will see the first um, uh, miscellaneous legislative amendment uh, since we passed the new code is the the, the band-aids that we need mm -hmm. to the, correct various errors that we've found um, yeah yeah <laughs> so um, that'll come before you at the next um, planning commission meeting and um, we're still moving chugging away at the transportation system plan update that's moving forward and um, yeah that's all I got 
Any questions? Oh, um, one more thing. Next, at the next city council meeting, which will be May 9th, um, we're doing, they, they've switched to doing a, the first meeting of the month, which is a, which is actually the second Tuesday. Um, they are doing workshops or uh, work sessions to just um, not have any votes, but just work on various things. Um, and then the set, the fourth Tuesday of the month will be the, the meeting where all the votes actually take place with the exception of anything that is urgent. And so most land use applications were having an expedited city council meeting before that work session so that they can vote on all those matters and we don't slow down any developer or anything like that. Um, but at the one on Tuesday, I am giving a training uh, on land use matters and it's basically going to be the same training that you all received a couple of uh, month and a half ago mm -hmm. that Angela gave. I was absent for that um, and so I, now I get to do that same thing for the city council. But uh, for those who weren't there, I believe Mr. Branson, you were there, but Commissioner White, you were not. So um, if you would like to come attend uh, the council meeting on this coming Tuesday at 630, uh, then you'd be able to to hear that training as well. Okay. Um, so um, come on by. But that's that's all I've that's all I've got. Any questions about? Any of that? Anything that anybody else wants to bring up? No. I think we all want to go home. Yep. Uh, <laughs> amen. Me okay. too. Well, the meeting is already adjourned, so. <laughs> now we can officially adjourn. Thank you. Thank you.